God, we thank you that you indeed watch over us. God, we are grateful that you watch over your word to perform it. That every promise in you is yes and amen. So we thank you, oh God, for your word of life. Help us to open our hearts, open our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying on today. God, we thank you for the difference this word will make in our lives. Send someone in our pathway, Lord, this week that we can share this word of gladness with. We thank you for setting us free. And God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For God, you are our rock and our redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, we're going to be today in uh, John chapter 20. John chapter 20, uh, looking at verses 19 through 29. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 29. So, um, I don't know about you, but like this week was kind of rough for me. Uh, it was it was a hard week. I, I now understand why everyone has been talking about that 600 pound life and will they find you because uh, somehow, somehow, I, I don't know if it's between the ham and all those corn chips and you know, that day of lounging on the couch, but somehow I gained like seven pounds this week. I, I didn't even know that you can gain seven pounds in seven days, but I'm a witness. It is, it is possible. It was a rough week today, but I thank God for my husband, you know, who is a, who is a, a, a good cheerleader. He said, well, honey, you know, Saturday is your weigh-in day, and on Saturday, you'll be a champion again. That's right, undefeated. That's you'll right. be undefeated on Saturday. The, the slate is wiped clean on Saturday. You know, and when he said that, it really kind of struck with me because all this week I've been hearing that phrase. I, I pop up with an email and I see that phrase, blank slate. I really believe that this is a season where God has given us a blank slate. This is an open door and an opportunity to reset as we prepare to move forward. And I want to encourage you today not to let the baggage and the hurts and the hangups of yesterday sabotage you from moving forward in this season God is calling us to. You see, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, For freedom, Christ has set us free. Therefore, stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For freedom, Christ has set us free. So for the next few weeks, I want to share about being set free and the freedom that we have in this new season in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody say set free. Set free. Set free. Let's go to God's word. John chapter 20, starting with verse 19. So let me just set this up first. Mary, who has been to the tomb and has uh, declared when she got back to the disciples that Jesus Christ has been resurrected. Well, they didn't believe her. So it starts here in verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together, when the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace! be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, peace be with you. 
As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. The doors were locked because of fear. You know, the disciples in that time, they were not living in the victory and they were not living in the power of the resurrection as Easter people. They weren't running out and telling everyone, hey, Jesus is raised from the dead. No, they were behind locked doors. They were hiding, trying to keep out certain people, people who might try to kill them just as Jesus was killed. You know, we have been locked behind our, our homes, locked in our homes. We have locked our doors for a few weeks, trying to keep a virus out, trying to keep out sick people who may unintentionally try to bring about our demise unintentionally. We've been trying uh, to huddle together, locked in to keep something out. Some of us, we've been locked in and we're not concerned about trying to keep something out. We're just going crazy with the chaos of everybody being in the house all at the same time. Come on now. Ooh. Yeah. We got other struggles as we are locked behind our closed doors. Hmm. But Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, is not hindered by locked doors. And I am grateful for that on today. That Jesus has a will and Jesus has a way to get to you right where you are. Even if you have locked yourself behind some walls, even though you may have locked yourself inside your home and locked yourself away from relationships, Jesus has a way to appear right in the midst of you. Right when you least expect it. To send a word of peace to you. Because this is a season, a blank slate, a time to move forward. Yeah, Jesus wants to come and declare peace to your soul, peace to your mind, peace to your hearts, peace to your situation. No matter how chaotic it might be, peace to your circumstance. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace that will guard your heart through every high and low point of life. Jesus is able to come into your midst and speak the peace that you need today. You see, the peace of Christ can set us free. Jesus doesn't want us to be bound up, to be shackled, to be chained in our emotions, chained in worry, chained in fear. But for freedom, Christ has come to set us free for his glory, for his praise. He wants to set us free so that we can breathe in deeply what God is breathing out to us generously. The text says that Jesus breathed on his disciples and then he instructed them to receive the Holy Spirit because they were sent out to do ministry of reconciling people to God. Yeah, yeah, he was telling them, you might be behind this locked door scared, but I want to equip you and empower you because there is more beyond this moment. There is more beyond this week. 
Yeah. For me, it was a Saturday that was a clean slate and a new day to begin again my weight loss journey. But I'm telling you on today that there is more after this season of COVID-19. And Jesus wants to give you that peace and give you the Holy Spirit and prepare you to go out and to be all that he has called you to be, to do all that Jesus is calling you to do, to reconcile people and share your testimony and share the hope of the resurrection. You see, when we come out of our locked doors, we don't have to come out the same way. Hallelujah. You might have went into this back in March, a doubtful, fearful person, but you can walk out believing and filled with faith. You may have went in kind of like, eh, I don't know about that God stuff, eh, I ain't feeling that church stuff, but you can come out saying, I know that I know that I know that I know that there is a Savior who loves me and has a purpose and a plan for my life. You may have went in back in March one way, but baby, you can come out another way. Jesus is offering you peace and the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit, when we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He is our, our, our teacher, our, our helper one that sustains us. It reminds me of that time in Genesis. And when we talk about in the beginning, you can't get any more cleaner blank slate than in the beginning. But it was in the beginning that, that after God had formed Adam, after he had shaped this clay, this dirt into the shape of a man, it wasn't until he breathed the breath of life into him. That transformation began. And he went from a lump of clay to a living soul. Jesus wants to offer that to you. The Holy Spirit is available if you will breathe the Spirit in and receive what Christ is offering on today and believe. Believe. Because there's work to do. There is work for you to do. I'm going to talk more about that next week, but it's, it's not just about the, the preachers or having an ordination or having a license. God has work for each and every one of us to do. God wants to use all of us for his glory and for his praise to be ministers of reconciliation and peace. Yeah, we have to rise up in this time. Rise up in the freedom that Christ has won for us on Calvary's cross and minister reconciliation, to offer people forgiveness, to let them know that there is a loving Father who doesn't care what you've done, doesn't care who you are, he says, come unto me. I want you. I love you. I want to use you. I want to use you. I offer you peace this day. So let us point and lead and usher people in to relationship and fellowship with God. So the story of our text doesn't end there. Let, let, let's see how it finished. In walks Thomas. Verse 24. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, which means the twin, was one of the twelve. And uh, he was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Mm -hmm. They got the peace and they got that Holy Spirit. They shout now, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, hmm, well, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nail marks are and, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. 
Verse 26, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I know often we focus on Thomas's doubting and we call him Doubting Thomas, but I want us to shift and look a little bit more to the response that Jesus gives. How Jesus answers his requests specifically so that Thomas could have faith, so that Thomas could believe. What proof do you need so that you will believe that there is a savior who loves you, that Jesus is Lord? What, what do you need so that your belief can grow from here to here? Make your requests known to God. This is the season. This is the, the blank slate moment. Ask the Lord. Because God already knows. You might as well be honest and say it out loud. What is it that you need so that you might stop doubting? and believe. Jesus hears you. And I'm so grateful that we have a gracious God who will send you the sign that you need so that you will believe. God wants to give you evidence of the resurrection, that the resurrected presence and power is not just something we read in a book, but it's something that is alive and available to you today. Open your hearts, open your eyes, open your ears so that you can feel and see and hear what the Spirit is saying to his people on today. So that you can recognize God's will for your life. Come on, it's time to rise up. It's time to rise up as the freedom generation. It's, it's time to rise up for we have been set free. The blank slate is before us. Rise up today in faith and believe. Come on, somebody say rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Hallelujah. 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 There's a song that says, we are the free. And we can sing that like we believe it on today. 